Hey guys, Middle Jesus here, and I am back again with my good bud, Reggie. What's up, brother? What's up? And as you guys know, we're doing another pickups video. We've got a lot of exciting stuff to it's show you like guys. It's been like 14 years since we did the last one. It feels like it. Every time <laughs> that we don't do one, it feels like that long. So yeah. we've got a lot of stuff to show you guys. I hope you guys are excited. Dude, I have a great gift for you. Oh. You can love it. All right, Parts let's, racing. Let's take a look. Before we get started, I do want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Stern Pinball, and we'll have more on that later, but why don't you go first? All right, I think you're going to be impressed with this one, man. I found, okay. I think I crossed over. I haven't seen anything that he brought, so this is going to be pretty fun. And I finally got some vinyl here. Oh, you did? Yeah. Wow. Here's the uh, soundtrack for Gunboard, which is a game we talked about on the channel before. Yeah. It's from Red Art Games. Um, do you have a turntable yet? I do. You do? I got one, yeah. yeah. Oh, very cool. All yeah, right. so I, I'm good to go on that. And then Lakia here, um, this is from Pixel Heart. Yeah, um, you talked about this game a while ago. A really awesome game. The soundtrack is on point, man. Huh. It's really great. And this one right here is Stellar Interface, and this is from uh, Video Games New York. Okay. Uh, you can pick it up there. Is, is that what you're going to do is collect mostly video game soundtrack? Yeah, I think if I if I dip into like other categories, I'll be like torn apart. So I'll stick to music for now. <laughs> and if yeah. I want to dip my tone other stuff later, I, I possibly like, will. Like game sound soundtracks for now, you yeah, think? Yeah, game yeah. soundtracks for now. Yeah. And then I'll be good. But yeah, I'm really happy to have this, man. I mean, I just feel like uh, vinyl is just like the way to play your music at home. You know? I've mentioned this before, that one of the things that's great about vinyl is mm -hmm. that it it lasts beyond formats. In other words, you can play a vinyl that was made a hundred years ago mm -hmm. on the same turntable. Crazy. And, you know, so it doesn't really, it, it's not reliant on trends or, or technology or, mm -hmm. you know, MP3 versus lossless. It It's forever. Yeah. So that that's what I love about it, too. Right on. So, wow, I'm, I'm excited for you. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, man. That was awesome. Now I'll, I'll be on the hunt for you. I'll just have to find some stuff All right. that you might like. <laughs> All right, dude. Uh, my first game here, I am so excited to talk about it. It was a complete surprise. That is RoboCop Rogue City. Whoa, yes. Xbox Series X. Um, I mean, this is a game that I think a lot of people had probably low expe expectations for because licensed games are typically terrible. Right. And this is not terrible. This is actually really, really fun. It is. And the company who made this game, they actually did the Terminator Resistance game, which was really Dude, a surprise. Hit. When you told me that, because I didn't play that game, because mm -hmm. again, similar, I was like, oh, I don't know if that's going to be any good. Now I, I'm, I'm going to get the copy of that Dude, game. You're going to love it. Dude. Like, I bet. Blown away with that one. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing this one. You know, it, I think that it bridges the gap between Robocop 2 and 3, I would think, somewhere between, or maybe... You could be right. I mean, it takes place in the, in the that time period. It has okay. uh, a lot of the same characters. Um, uh, you know, it's it's voiced by uh, Peter Weller. Yep. Um, it, it takes place in, in Detroit. The graphics are, like, shockingly good. Yeah, and there's I remember seeing a scene in the game, because you have choice in this game. Yeah. Like, where the robot cop could, like, uh, arrest somebody or yep. let him go for what... There's a, there's a part in the game where a kid is, like, spraying graffiti on the wall... And you could arrest them, or yeah. you could give them a warning. And if you give them a warning, then the next time RoboCop comes back to the area, there's like a mirror of him on the wall. Like well, it's, it's outstanding. It's, the game has surprising amounts of kind of RPG elements to it, which I was not expecting, including, like you said, side missions and yeah. choice and all this stuff. Oh, dude, I, I liked it way more than I expected to. I will say it definitely has some spikes in difficulty. There is a, a boss with Ed 209 mm -hmm. that is really tough. And then uh, last couple levels in that game are tough, but... I finished it. I loved it. Right on, man. Yeah. But next item here is something pretty unique. Got this from, uh, what do they call it, Expo here? Um, the one in Seattle. The one is, um, it's called... It's an Expo in Seattle? Yeah, it's... it's um, I forgot what it's called all of a sudden. It's so weird. Well, anyways... <laughs> Got this one. Uh, so many, uh, so it's not a retro gaming expo. It's not a gaming expo. It's the it's the expo where they like show off games and stuff like that. Oh, PAX. PAX. Oh, okay. Why did I forget that. <laughs> so I couldn't go to PAX, uh, but my buddy went, and I said, "Great, I'm glad you're going because there's something I want." Oh. And we picked up this, and you probably guys could probably get a hint of what this is. So the developer was there. Yeah, and, and they been... they were selling the the, uh, the first 200 copies of this game there, and this is. Uh, Castle Crashers for the Switch. So, Whoa. Okay, a little, little action figure here. Um, so, so, this was like a PAX exclusive or at least something that they were selling, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, the first hundred came with a coin. Okay. And then uh, the next hundred came with like some stickers and stuff like that. But you got the little little um, doll here. Oh, and you yeah. got the game. The game. 
and some stickers, keychains, wow. all that good stuff. So I was really happy with this. So you must have just been following them on social media and saw that they were. Yeah, I saw that. somebody. I saw them post on 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 on, on X, and I was like, huh. oh wow! They told my buddy, and he picked it up. For Including me. like a custom bag. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was like a pizza bag or something. <laughs> <laughs> but Castle Crash is a really good beat 'em up game. Um, it's oh yeah. To, it's ported now to the Switch. It originally came out on Xbox 360 back in the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. It was so. one. Of, it was one of the early kind of Xbox Live arcade like su successes, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. So. so happy to have huh. you have this. So okay, that really was cool. not expecting that. It's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, well, next up for me is also another new, well, new version of an older older game. That is Cyberpunk ah. 2077, the PS5 version. This is the version that comes with the Phantom Liberty DLC. Right. It's version 2.0. Um, so I originally played this when it came out on the Xbox Series X. It was, I, I think I got the download or something. No, no, I bought the physical. But anyways, uh, this is the much improved version of the game. Mm -hmm. Replayed it. Uh, I thought it was amazing. The DLC is incredible. Really? It's awesome. And so I've been telling everybody, I told you this too, that uh, if you're going to start the game for the first time, the moment that you get access to the, to the, the, the DLC, DLC, just go there. Really? Because it opens up another section of the city and it, you can go back and forth. Mm -hmm. And you'll want to do that because some of the stuff that's in the DLC area, you'll want to complete. That way it'll tie into the overall ending of the game. Okay. I loved it. Actually, it was one of those things where I replayed it. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to just start it again. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. Yeah. So, I, you know, it's no surprise I'm a big... Uh, cyberpunk fan, so you know, yeah, really cool, cool. Yeah, you'll have to play it. Okay, next item I have here is a game that like really blew me away. Um, this is Full Void for the Evercade, um, dude. <laughs> I played this, yeah, it surprised me. It, 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 it really yeah. surprised me, yeah. So it's basically kind of like flashback, yep, it's like a brand new kind of flashback, sort of that style of motion capture mm -hmm. and animation it's cool and it keeps you hooked because you don't know what's going on i mean yeah. you're a kid running from these these crazy robots yeah. and it's just like no one's out there to help you and it's like really like just like eerie and everything like yeah that. you're running on on rooftops and you're trying to figure you're just trying to survive it's, yeah. it's definitely kind of like flashback where you'll die a lot right. because you don't know what to do and then you'll figure it out then it gets you a little bit further yeah definitely trial and error but not on the hard level like something like heart of darkness or something that's like that. true it's, it's yeah definitely fair and it keeps you interested it keeps you hooked and i'm happy that evercade is starting to get like exclusive like games like this one and yeah. this is a really special version of it because i don't think they've done this kind of like collector's mm -hmm. edition you know with the, like an art book and all that sort yeah. of stuff in there that's cool you got this yeah so the physical version exclusive to the evercade but if you want to play it you can download it on modern consoles as well just want to put that out there for everybody so huh but definitely a really a solid game very impressed with it yeah yeah that's cool uh -huh. i didn't know you had that okay yeah yeah all right, next up is another game for the PS5 that I got recently. It is called Jets and Guns 2. Ah, nice. So Jets and Guns 2, I originally, well, I originally played the, the original game mm -hmm. on the PC. I believe that's kind of where it got, yeah. got its roots is mm -hmm. on the PC. It's a, uh, a horizontal shooter, and especially with this version right here, um, it is all about weapons. I don't know how many weapons there are. There's probably hundreds of weapons right. in this game. It's almost like the borderlands of shooters because you just basically are swapping in and out weapons and stuff like that. It's cool. Stuff blows up real good in this game. Have you played it yet? <laughs> I played it briefly. Like, I think like a couple minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, this, man, this looks good though, man. Yeah. Yeah. The back of it here, like it's showing like a lot of the effects and everything. Like yeah, that. It, it's a, it, and it, it's got its own kind of style to it as well, which I really like. Like you know, there's a lot of shooters out there, and I, I just feel like this one definitely kind of has its own visual style to it. Plus, again, uh, just all the the weapons and stuff like that, and you know, it's also kind of funny as well. Like when the little dudes die and explode and stuff. It's like <laughs> <laughs> so I I, dig, I had no idea it was on PS5. I was very excited to get yeah, that. Yeah, Red Art Games, man, they really put yeah, out some good titles. They here. do. All right, so the next item here is, is kind of big, but just a little history on it. So mm -hmm. back in November, um, I saw a sale from, from a Cheap Ass Gamer uh, on Instagram. Oh, not Instagram, but on X. Mm -hmm. And um, they said the local Target had these uh, arcade one-up countercades for 100 bucks. I was like, I wasn't really looking for them, but I was like, 100 bucks? That's kind of intriguing. So yeah. I uh, went down there and got one. Now, the first one, because I'm going to show you guys, is the Marvel one. Uh, this I was, didn't realize that they're doing this uh, even smaller. So for like yeah. your, your countertop, I had no idea. Exactly. That's that's the only reason I picked them up, man. Because uh, I felt like the regular arcades are just not enough. I like the countercades. You can put them up. Easy. They're heavy too. They're quality. Yeah, and then these have battery packs on them. So oh. um, yeah, you can take them portable and oh, everything yeah. like that. So they do. 
Yeah, it doesn't come like that, but we added it on, which is cool. This my is only a hundred bucks. Yeah, only a hundred bucks. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, shout out to my buddy JLS Gaming. He helped me get uh, this next one. I'm going to show you guys here, and uh, people were going crazy for this one. But this is the Ninja Turtles one. So um, this has a battery pack on it as well. And um, huh. yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the beat 'em up Ninja Turtles games. So uh, he helped me find it. So thanks a lot, buddy. I appreciate you. Yeah. Um, these are the ones I want to show in the video because I feel like these are more like modern ones. I would say that people would probably take interest in. The, yeah. Well, Ninja Turtles only has two games. That one has four games, and it even has the Punisher in it. So very cool. And I love Marvel Superheroes, the original game, um, uh, Infinity Gauntlet. And awesome. this this is a, a size that I think more people can keep around their house. Exactly. And it doesn't exactly. Take up, you know, mm -hmm. huh. does take up a lot of room and everything like that. Like I feel like counter carries are are, are good. So. Yeah. All right, I want to put this one over here. <laughs> All right, uh, next up for me, uh, a game I picked up when I went to Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Ah. Yeah, I've been looking for Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions because I, it's a game I skipped back mm -hmm. when it first came out. I was kind of, wasn't really into the Spider-Man games at the time. Right. And this game has only kind of gotten, uh, not necessarily better, but a lot of people have been looking for it because right. of the movies and the, the kind of renewed interest. And the uniqueness to it. There's like a noir Spider-Man in this game. That's exactly right. Yeah. I know, I love this. So yeah, so you play four different Spider-Mans and uh, in, in each, each one of them has their own look, their own fighting style or their own combat style. And you mentioned noir mm -hmm. Spider-Man is uh, my favorite because yeah. it's kind of black and white. with. Yep. A you know, and it's all about stealth. It's actually pretty cool. So um, you'll notice uh, this is the PAL version, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to remember how much I paid for it. It was not expensive. Okay. Because uh, the guy who was like, "Hey, you might be interested in this," so I was like, "Oh, it was PAL." And he's like, "No, the PS3 is region free to play just yep. fine." It does. And yeah, the footage you guys are seeing is me playing the game on my North American PS3. So, and I think I only paid thirty dollars for it, which nice. the, for this game is actually a pretty good deal. Have you seen the movie Enter the Spider Verse? I uh, is is that the second one? I think it is with all the Spider Mans in it. Like I believe yeah. so. Um, I, well, I saw the first one. I haven't seen the the most recent one. Yet. Okay, okay, okay. That's the one I was. But I did see the one. I know that now there's all these multiverses. Mm -hmm. But I did see the the live action one where spoiler they bring back the other Spider Mans. Yeah, they, they bring in Tommy uh, awesome. Tobey Maguire. That was <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah. So so it, now it's kind of the time for this game. You know. Yeah. So anyways, I was happy to get a get this. So. Very cool, man. Very yeah. cool. Okay, so next game here, um, well, it's always hard to choose, but um, this is Rival Mega Gun. Now, Rival Mega Gun is a shoot 'em up, but hmm. it's like one of our favorite games. A, games I told, a game I told you about years ago, uh, Twinkle Star Sprites. Um, it's a verse um, uh, shoot 'em up game. So you have two screens, wow. your opponents on the other side, and you're shooting up enemies. And definitely a lot of fun. I had no idea this game existed. Um, it, this is it technically a retail re release? Because it doesn't have. Does it have uh, Peggy or? Uh, it's from uh, First Press Games. If you heard of them, uh, okay. so they, they're the ones that put out the physical oh, for it. Oh wow! And um, dude, no, yeah, I've no, not man. heard of this. It is a lot of fun, man. It's like, dude, like seriously, I never thought they would make a game similar to Twinkle Star Sprites, hmm. uh, but this game is it, and I think it's better in ways. So definitely something cool to have. I mean. Very unique game. Every time you come over, my list so, of, of so <laughs> games that is gross. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. Well, next up for me is a pretty cool release here. This ah. is from, uh, uh, so this is uh, Eagle Island Twist, mm -hmm. and basically this is Eagle Island is kind of like a, a pixel art two D roguelike platformer, mm -hmm. and but then they also added the twist, which is the DLC. Right. And so this is a very special, you know, kind of, uh, you know, premium edition version of it. Right on. And uh, just a beautiful, fun game. Uh, the, the the main mechanic here is that you have a bird that you you throw. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a, a it's almost like a boomerang basically, but it's it's a bird, and it, it you use that for combat, you use that for for puzzle solving and things like that. Right Super on. fun game. Uh, I really really dug this game, so I was, I was happy to get this version. Very of it. cool, man. Right on. Yeah. Okay, next up here we have one of my favorite fighting game series. And a re-release of King of the Fighters 13 for PS4 and the Switch. Is there any King of the Fighters that you don't have at this point? Uh, I'm Seems only missing the, uh, one of the easier ones to get. I think the King of Fighters Co. co on, a, on the freaking um, PS1. I think that's what it's called. I can't remember. But I'm missing just a couple of yeah, yeah, yeah. niche ones. They're not expensive, though. But yeah, I love King of the Fighters. Uh, uh, yeah. Had to have everything King of the Fighters. So I went ahead and picked this up. Definitely a solid game, man. Um, Is this a new release? It's a new, uh, it's a it's a re-release actually, because the oh, original okay. game came out in 2000, I think, 4, no, 11 or 12, somewhere hmm. like that. 
But uh, it didn't have like the extra characters on the disc. They, there was DLC added characters. This has the characters on the disc now, so everybody's available and it's a full game. The pinnacle of 2D sprite-based fighting. Yeah, the last 2D uh, King of Fighters game. And two different covers depending on what you get because you know it's him right there and then yeah. a different version of that guy. Well, both have reversible covers, so I just wanted to make them look. Oh, yeah. oh, oh! Well, yeah. there you go. So you tricked me. And, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I got that from Pixel Love. You know, Pixel Love. Oh, know, very cool. That out. So yeah, pretty impressed. That's the thing about that is that you know it used to be we would just pay attention to limited run games mm -hmm. now you you have like all of you know they yeah. each put out like like cool releases huh you have to <laughs> kind of pick and choose yeah yeah speaking of which uh super rare so they put out this game called orbital bullet mm -hmm. have you played this no i have not man dude it's it's really cool so it's a run and gun roguelike shooter platformer game but but the premise here is that the entire level is round so okay. essentially almost like reso gun you remember playing that game or like uh pandemonium on pandemonium the, perfect yeah, yeah yeah so it's also like that okay i you know i can picture exactly how. yeah so you can kind of see the rotating you can like, kind of see the entire level so, so it, what that really does it, it kind of keeps you in the center right mm -hmm. and what that does is it kind of gives you a strategy because you can see the enemies uh, that are around you and mm -hmm. you basically you know it, it's basically seeing more of the level as you platform as you shoot right. as you upgrade as you're getting new weapons and stuff it's very addictive you know mm -hmm. so i've been getting more and more into kind of these these uh roguelike games yeah. where you know you don't necessarily have you don't want to get in you don't want to try to remember the story right you kind of want to get in for 20 30 minutes mm -hmm. have some fun get out go on your way you know yeah you know it's crazy i would have never heard of this game if super rare hadn't put it as a physical so yeah 100 percent. i mean and i don't know if that's the only physical version of it but you know that's one of the things about these companies i do like is that they are preserving these games yeah, right definitely. so it's pretty cool so right on, right on okay next up here something cool um from project retro games we have clock tower and the clock tower collection so <laughs> basically um this one right here is a is a clock tower uh the original clock tower on super nintendo translated on the on the playstation one system so okay uh and games, that one's 2d right or like yeah yeah that's the okay. 2d one games in english <laughs> and um you could play you could play like a like on emulators but i wanted to have a physical of that game because mm -hmm. i'm Clock Tower, one of my favorite series out there. Uh, it even comes with a, a poster and everything yeah, like that. Cool. So very cool. And these are pressed games, so just to let everybody know. But you had to play them on a modded system, you know, because um they never they never cracked the wobble detection for the PS One. So you had to have a modded system or okay. a test system or a system that's modded to be able to play games like did, that. So. Did you try it on the Polymega yet? Yeah, it worked on Polymega. There yeah, you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And then the collection here is a. These were released in America too, but they're very expensive, so they. He's put them both on this collection here, just in case people wanted to get them like that. So oh, another poster, that's cool. Yeah, another poster. Yeah, yeah. All right, well that's cool. Yeah, again, are you running out of survival horror games to collect? Never, at this point? never, ever. <laughs> yeah, I love this stuff. <laughs> All right, uh, next up for me, I was pretty excited to get this. This is the the sequel, uh, Hot Wheels Unleashed Two Turbocharged. Mm. So you know me, I love a good arcade racing game, and these Hot Wheels games, the first one I think came out a couple years ago in two. 2021 mm -hmm. surprised everyone yeah. um yeah it's actually a really fun arcade racing game it's cool because they recreate the look of the classic hot wheels it, down to like you know how they're painted and mm -hmm. also how they're made of plastic and stuff like that but the uh the levels are really fun because you're it, it's essentially kind of real world and you're shrunken down mm -hmm. and so every it, almost like a micro machines kind of how they you know right um really solid mechanics here that's the key to making one of these you know some of these games fun where the drifting is really natural right. um good good amount of challenge lots of big jumps and stuff like that so another great game and yeah if you like arcade racing games it, it's Definitely. highly recommended now i'm interested in it I yeah. if it is it on ps4 or ps5 i believe so because okay, i cool. think i originally played uh the first one on playstation network because it was included with uh the you know the, the specials uh, yeah the yeah. the, the, the PlayStation okay. Plus or whatever it was. So oh, cool. yeah, so it kind of makes those rounds. I'm sure there might even be it on like Game Pass or something like that. So, right on. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next up here we have another fighting game. Yes. What? Undernight in Birth Part Two. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, very happy to have this game. I love the first game. It's from the makers of a game called Milty Blood. If you guys remember that, there's a lot of people. The kids call them now anime fighters now because they're so like anime ish. Ah, like those kids. There's different categories for fighting games. I just call them 2D fighters, but yeah. But um, <laughs> anyways, this is a sequel. Now, 
there, I did have a problem with this one because when they, when you make a sequel to a fighting game, you want to include the original characters, of course, which they did, but you want to add at least five new characters available in a, in a sequel. They had three new characters available on this one, hmm. and I think that's... I, I, I was okay with it. Obviously, I picked it up, but they should at least have five, and I understand, you know, like, you doing sprite work is very hard for them because they're a small company, hmm. so they can't really, like... like are, know, are the locations different? Locations, what do you mean? Like, like where you're fighting at. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. The different, levels. different levels. Yeah. Different okay. levels. Hmm. Uh, some newer. Yeah. Newer levels and stuff like that. Like new boss and all that stuff. A new oh, story, okay. pretty much. So yeah, I think it's definitely worth getting. But I just wish, like, in the future, if they do a sequel. Make sure you add at least five new characters with the re- remaining uh, cast. Because um, especially if you're going to buy two copies of the game. <laughs> hey, one, one Reggie. Home and one and one on the go. Because I play. People don't realize I play my Switch like on the go. I don't. Yeah. I, I don't ever yeah. have a dock, so it's more like a like a, a go system. So yeah. You know what they need to bring in the switch too is cross saves right because cross wouldn't that be amazing if if you know that would encourage people more people to buy yeah right the switch version and your big console version yeah it would it would or i guess you could just dock your switch and also in the switch to backwards compatibility hopefully yeah, yeah. No, we were talking about that last night so yeah bring that I know, they need too. to do that too <laughs> all right guys now we want to tell you a little bit about our sponsor stern pinball Now, I'm sure you guys have heard of Stern Pinball. They've been around for decades, making some of the most beloved pinball machines of all time. Well, in 2023, they released another amazing pinball machine, this time featuring one of Marvel's most complex and iconic characters, Venom. And I got a chance to check out this brand new machine at a local Seattle arcade, and I gotta tell you, it blew me away. Right off the bat, the game lets you choose to play as several different characters in the Venom universe, and it alters the entire gaming experience, both physically and digitally, depending on which you choose. This machine also includes Stern's Insider Connected system, which enables players to create their own account, and then you can interact with the game and also a global network of players. And this really surprised me because with this, you can save your game progress and then pick right back up later on, either on the same pinball machine or a completely new one in a different arcade across town or even around the world. You also earn game specific achievements and you can participate in promotions and challenge quests, as well as engage with the larger player community. And as you can see by this footage, physical games feature really advanced electronics as well as dynamic RGB LEDs. You've also got that 15 inch screen that really expands the experience and brings in kind of video game technology into the pinball world. And the music changes depending on which character you decide to play as. So you're gonna hear different styles of music throughout the gameplay. And there are over a dozen music tracks from the musician Mark Tremonti. Venom pinball games are available in a pro, premium, and a limited edition model. And so as you can see, Stern Pinball continues to innovate and create some amazing pinball machines, and I am thrilled that they decided to sponsor this video. So check out sternpinball.com for more information. All right, you mentioned Evercade, and another big release from Evercade, I was so excited to see these, are the Duke oh, Nukem nice, games dude. that they got. So this is pretty cool because there's, there's two of them here, and essentially what they did, the one I was really excited about was Duke Nukem 1 and 2 Remastered. Master. So those are really old PC games back in the day. I remember playing them along with oh, geez, you know, Jazz Jackrabbit, I think, yeah, and, and wow. uh, Commander Keen and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So they completely remastered those games uh, and made them, frankly, a lot better. They're widescreen, but more importantly, uh, they, they improve the frame rate. Okay. So these games are actually way more playable now, too, in my opinion. Right on. Um, and, and you can switch back and forth between the old graphics and the new at any time. Uh, they also have the piece, uh, the PlayStation 1 version of Duke Nukem 3D. Mm-hmm. Um, I, for whatever reason, that's the version that they license. And then they've got, like, the the Game Boy Advance version. Yeah, of that's it. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it's trippy, actually. So it's a, Well, it's the a one I remember was Land of the Babes. That's the one that came out on PS1, I remember, back in the day. And I thought that one was cool at the time, so yeah, I need yeah. to try it out again. See, so, yeah, this is cool, dude. Yeah, wow. it's cool that they did this. I, that's I've mentioned this before, but I like how Evercade is kind of carving their niche with this. They're not trying to just put out big games that everybody knows about. They're really digging in and kind of like like resurrecting some of these games, mm-hmm. or you know, putting some indie games on there. That right. you know, so it's it's pretty cool. It's fun to collect for it, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. All right, next item here, collector's edition. Um, this is Star Ocean, the second story R, 
replacing this for. Okay. But um, I got the collector's edition sent to me uh, by Square Enix because they liked the video I did uh, really? before the game came out. Yeah, they sent that to me. I, I still plan on doing a review for it, but let me tell you guys, I did everything in the game. I got my platinum. I unlocked all the endings um, in the game. There was 99 endings uh, added to this version of it. And um, it's, it was just an amazing experience, you know, like going through this game. And they really did a good job remastering this game. They just, um, they actually uh, used the PSP version, voices, English voices for it, which was great because mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't didn't know about the PSP version or didn't wasn't didn't sell that, wasn't that popular or whatever like that. But the animation they added to this one, when you're talking to like certain characters and everything like that, um, just uh, everything that fit well, the environments, how they remastered them, beautiful. And I spent, huh. so I spent around, I want to put around 90 hours into the game. Um, unlocking everything, you know, obviously getting the platinum. And the endings was the hardest part because, like, there's 99 of them. You can only get, like, a certain amount on each playthrough. So, I was wait, going wait, to... wait, 99, en not 99 endings. Endings, yeah. Variation <laughs> ending, yeah. That's really? Yeah, I unlocked all of them, man. Like, I had to do it because I wanted to see, I wanted to unlock everything. This was the perfect time wow. to do it. Wow. Because in the original game, it doesn't document what endings you unlocked in the original game. This game does document the endings, so oh, you, you can, can, you can see. It. Yeah, you yeah. can track it. It's a lot easier. I know I unlocked maybe like 60 endings in the original, but you have to write it down. Or well, no like wonder they sent you this. So you're like hardcore. <laughs> yeah, I, I went all in it, man. I love Star Ocean. I hope wow. they remastered more of them. That's cool. You know, so that's it was a cool. really good time. It's cool they did that, actually. Because yeah. they're like, yeah, this guy's a super fan, possibly crazy. Yeah, let's send him something. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's really so, cool. Yeah, yeah, very impressive. Wow, all right. I'm impressed. Uh, next up for me, a, a release I was surprised to see, which is The Legend of Steel Empire. So wow. the, so Steel Empire is a horizontal shooter that I played a long time ago on the mm -hmm. Sega Genesis. And it's a uh, steampunk era shooter. And it's really cool because you have basically forward and back attacks. And so a lot of the battles in this game, you are shooting behind you sometimes, mm -hmm. you're shooting ahead of you. Uh, it also drops bombs and stuff like that. Just a fantastic game. Actually, the moment I got this, I just beat it. I was just, yeah, I just, I, I didn't it, play huh? it all the way through. Yeah, because I really liked it on Genesis. And actually, this version of it, I think, is even better than that. Mm -hmm. They've updated, updated the graphics a little bit. They also got rid of the the original game had some pretty serious flicker. Mm -hmm. They kind of tried to make it look like an old movie or tele or when it gets to that side stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah and to up. be honest, when you play it today, the original you're kind of like blinking your eyes because it's like hurting, you know. <laughs> uh, it, it, this doesn't do that. <laughs> good, good. Wow, this is very cool, man. Yeah, really cool release. Again, I didn't expect that. I mean, that's the thing about the Switch is that there's so many games like this where you're like. Who knew they were going to release that? You know what I mean? It's like right. some obscure kind of shoot Genesis shooter. So Definitely cool, man. Right yeah, on. I was happy um, with that. This next item is going to be kind of funny to you, but I, I had to get it. Uh, Neo Geo Mini Christmas Edition. Um, <laughs> oh, really? This has actually the most games out of any of the systems I played. 48 games on there. And um, it's got it's got Rudolph. It's got a reindeer on it. Yeah, yeah, all of the little stuff like that. It, it's That's pretty. Funny. I don't know if people would like the red for it and everything like that, but uh, I think it's pretty I, cool. I'm a huge fan of the color red. So yeah, yeah. And That's here's cool. here's remember that line from Neo Geo Mini? You remember? No. <laughs> Click eight thumbsticks. It's very hard oh, to make. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> and you can do that on a shirt or something like that. That's, but, I, that's right. Oh, okay. you're, you're saying my line. Yeah, that's yeah, your okay, line. Yeah, that's, <laughs> or I guess they said it and I was like... Dude, I, I, when I saw that video and I saw that part and I just started, started busting out laughing, I, I just never forgot it. Man. Oh, like, dude, I know. Like, well, it, became, it kind of became a meme a little bit. Because, yeah. yeah, it's funny that, that that's... Yeah. <laughs> so how many colors of this did they release? Because they, they had so, the, blue, the white and blue. I'm trying to think which ones the, I have. There's the they have a new one that just came out the MVS version. I was trying to get that, but I couldn't get it, so I actually I oh. got that version over it. Um, so there's two red MVS one, and then obviously Christmas one, hmm. uh, the red, black, and white one, which is the international color and the um, uh, American cover. And then I think there's one other one after that, but maybe I'm wrong. well. Then there's the Neo Geo ones up there. I mean the uh, Samurai Showdown ones. There's a blue, a clear, That's right. a black. That's right. And blue. So yeah. Huh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This one's pretty interesting, dude. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be curious to, to see what you think of this. It, have you heard of this book? It's called NES Endings: The Compendium, Volume One, 1985 to 1989. No. So, dude, this is a pretty interesting book. A lot of people write books about, you know, sort of like their favorite 
games or they'll review games, mm -hmm. you know, on a, on a specific system. It's all awesome. I'd never heard of something like this. Brother, I know, I'll, I already know some of the endings on the cover here. You got the Mega Man 2 ending with the helmet in the grass. You have the Super Mario Brothers 2 ending at Mario's All a Dream, which still <laughs> upsets me with that game. That game was awesome. Yeah. I hate that was a dream. Uh, this is the ending to Ninja Gaiden. And this one right here, I feel like it's um, yeah, Castlevania. The Simon Quest. So crack it open and take a look, dude, because it's pretty interesting. So he basically covers a lot of the endings of these games, and he'll talk about why they were special mm -hmm. or if there was a different ending depending on wow. like regions. So right. like the North, you know, North American, we might have got a different ending. What a he, great he, idea! Yeah, it's actually pretty cool, you know. And so you can kind of it's it's a great book that's just different you know mm -hmm. what i mean like you, you whip this out for people who are fans of these games mm -hmm. maybe you haven't seen the ending in an awful long time right or, right or you know it's cool yeah and so he just goes year by year from 85 to 89 and covers all the endings and uh it's really interesting my favorite part about this is actually when he talks about the different endings uh in the different regions, regions right yeah it's like even some stuff where i forget what game it was but like you know, like multiple endings, like in Japan, they'll get like four endings, we'll get two or something like that. So um, this version right here of the book is a hardbound book. This was basically published on limited run games. I believe it's still there, costs like 35 bucks. Uh, you can get it on Amazon if you want just the paperback or the, the soft cover, yeah. which is like five bucks cheaper. Um, pretty not, easy to get, but it was pretty cool. I'm already finding there's extending, there was extending ending to Double Dragon for NES here. He's kind of showing the details of it right here. Dude, I... I actually, when I got this, I sat down and read it from cover to cover. Really? Yeah, I found it really fascinating because what a great idea this was, man! Wow. I know. This, okay, something I different. Too. Yeah, yeah, something different. Very cool, dude. Yeah. Uh, when we were talking about like patching and stuff like that, I was I was kind of hinting to this game. This is Daymare, uh, 1994, which uh, is a game you've talked about previously. Yeah. Okay. So I talked about the 98 one, uh, which is the oh, prequel. Okay. Yeah, pre this is the prequel to that, but it's, huh. this is a much better game. But what was funny about it was that um, when I put it in the system, you know, I needed to download a big patch for it. And I was itching to play it again. I was like, yeah, I'll just wait for the patch. Let me just play what's on the disc. And when I played what was on the disc, man, I was like, oh, my God, dude, this game is so uh, broken. It's, it, oh. It has, it was, it, well, here's okay, it's funny you mentioned, because we had a conversation about this last yeah, night. Because yeah. <laughs> I was making the argument, eh, day one patches, you're probably not needed. Mm -hmm. You're like... Yeah, wait till we talk about this tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Because uh, when I played the game, the whole intro sequence is different. Um, it's like weird and long. You go down this weird long hallway. <laughs> you talk to these characters and your characters, and you, you get on your helicopter and you go investigate the certain mission you're going to do. But what but the problem was that my characters were like glowing at certain points, like the way they looked. Like there was some kind of wrong, messed up effect in the game where they, I guess they didn't fix it or whatever like that. So it, I don't know if it's unplayable because I didn't play too far into it because obviously I want to play the, the final, the patch version. But it just made me laugh what's on the disc. And I don't know how early mm. they got those discs printed before they made the patches and everything. I think there's a certain threshold. I mean, a certain time I did to get this printed and ready to go. And then I just guess they figured, like, hey, we'll just have a patch ready to go because we know what's on the disc is not... Yeah, like, that, that's true. Usually it's like they, they make the gold master version of it that right. they send to the, du the duplicator and or maybe to like the publisher, or, you know, whoever makes the. Right. And so I do think it's at least several weeks in advance, if not I, I maybe like, like a month or something. When you get to the disc part of, of a game, it's got to be the one, at least the best version you could put on there. That's why that's why the day one patch for me, like, uh. Well, it, it, to your point, because that's the version that's going to be archived forever in right. people's collections. I mean, yeah, you're right. You yeah. want that to be a pretty solid version of your game, you right. would hope. Now, yeah. the game itself, though, guys, I would say I would re recommend people play it on easy because I feel like the balancing is really off. So some people might not be able to get in, get in it because it might be a little bit difficult. But if you play on easy mode, I feel it's easier to get into. And then if, you, if you're good at it, put it on normal and then hard. But definitely a solid game, I think, with the patch. Okay. All right, dude. Now it's time for me to give you a gift. And our friend Scotty, who runs the website miniboxgaming.com, yeah. uh, super awesome dude. Uh, he, 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 has, he has a gift for actually both of us. Oh. And, dude, I think you're going to love this. So, he knew that we that you are a fighting game fan. Oh. And and Scotty. I am a shoot em up oh. fan. And he's like, dude, do you have... No, open it. Do you have um, oh. do you have a an arcade stick for modern systems? And I was like, no, I've got lots of them actually for retro systems like the Dreamcast. And um, so... Oh. Scotty was looking out. Look at this, dude. Dude. Now, oh, Scotty. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure to look underneath it, too. Oh, my so, God. So, Scotty prints off a lot of those. 
those little mini boxes that I use in my collection and you do as well. Well, he's got a professional printing business and therefore he can print really excellent covers. Mm -hmm. Like look at look how look how good that looks. That's very good. <laughs> like, wow. I know. Yours, I was like, that's amazing. Like, yeah. dude, look, it's got your 100,000 subscriber. Yeah, no, oh, yeah. snap, dude. Yeah. I know. And so what's great about these is that, and again, Scotty, thank you so much. I, this is above and beyond. It's so cool. Scotty, you, you, you kept me in suspense, man. <laughs> yeah, so yours yours uh, normally isn't come with wireless. He included a wireless adapter in there. Okay. Um, Good looking out. Yeah, this will work, I guess, on the most, I haven't tried mine yet either, uh, but, you know, all the modern consoles and right. everything like that. So this this is a pretty cool and he because he's got a printing company and he's like I don't know which one you want he he printed off and you have them too in there okay so that's what's okay swappable uh you know you yeah, Facebook it looks like yeah yeah depending on what, what you know just if you want to change it off over time nice. very cool man right on yeah that was pretty cool man so and these are really uh, supposedly really well made like the, yeah. the, the really, you know uh, sanwa i guess is the the people who make right, the right, buttons nope. and you know stuff like that so he upgraded the buttons on mine as well so dude awesome man oh yeah see, uh, I, so check it out see mine has the you can choose what what you want to connect to so mm -hmm. apple android yeah, playstation think, 5 ps3 retro wild yours probably has something similar to that yeah i know that there's two different versions of this so Man, very cool, dude. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's got to look it out, man. That's a really cool gift. So uh, really, we really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, I know. All right, uh, next item for me is a survival horror game. Oh, I dropped some. We'll pick it up. Uh, this is called Guilt for <laughs> PS4. Also available for PS5, and now coming out for the Switch. Survival horror game where you play as a child is looking for a friend. And she is kind of. Well, I'll just. It, it reminds me of Alan Wake and Silent Hill put together, you know. And it, hmm. it, it's pretty trippy, you know, certain parts of the game because, like, when you you take this uh, trolley to, the, to to go home, but it ends up taking you to a, a twisted version of your, of your of your town. You go to your school, and like the, the city, you're on your way to your school trying to look for your friend, but the, the city's like all jacked up and hmm. just crazy looking. Uh, the, the streets are like busted up, like Silent Hill. Like, maybe when you play Silent Hill, the roads are like all like jacked up. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, you you walk up to the edge. Yeah, it's like, yeah. It's, nothing, it's, it's like that, and then. And you go to the school you're looking for your friend you have to hide from these crazy looking monsters and mannequins it's, <laughs> it's insanely good i was very surprised with it it's definitely a solid game and if you're looking for a physical copy video games new york stuff got your back uh, i dig out. this this backpack yeah uh, that collector's edition. yeah yeah, it's yeah. Pretty cool looking so yeah really really excited for the switch version coming out but definitely a cool survival horror game it's not crazy survival horror but it's just uh, enough you know it's yeah. got some scares in there it's very trippy so i think a lot of people will like this another game i've never heard of before <laughs> okay all right well next up is a game i know you hadn't heard of it because i messaged you and i was like dude uh -oh. did you play tiny kin remember uh, when i messaged you yeah, about you, this? Yeah, yeah you know why because i spent like an entire afternoon playing this game when i first got it really <laughs> yes. right on, man yeah, so, I mean, basically this is a super rare physical release here, and essentially it is kind of like a platforming puzzle meets Pikmin sort of game. Mm -hmm. Now, I like Pikmin, don't get me wrong, but I'm not obsessed with it. And I actually found this to be more enjoyable because there's kind of more, in my opinion, more platforming and adventure mm -hmm. mixed in with the controlling of the, the little minions that follow you. Uh, it, just super addictive, not too difficult. I mean, I was, the reason why I kept playing is because I kept, I kept getting places in it. Right, you know what right, I mean? Which making is, progress, yeah. I, mean, I was making progress and then finally I was like, Man, I gotta go do stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah, this is what I like about Super Rare, man. They, they know the titles to make physical and preserve. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. So, um, yeah, Tiny Kin. Yeah. Man, it's, it was a total surprise. Very cool, man. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, next here is a game I got from Pixel Love. Um, this is Gravity Circuit for the PS4 and the Switch, also hmm. available on the PS5. Uh, hmm. If you are if you like the Mega Man type games, uh, you could definitely get into like Mega Man uh, ZX or, or, or Zero Series. Uh, it kind of plays like those, but it's more like a beat em up. You get upgrades and stuff like that. Well, I shouldn't say beat em up because you get upgrades and stuff like that. But the first game, you have like these karate moves that you use on your enemies, and it's really a lot of fun. Hmm. The game is like uh, like very, very impressive. Um, I feel like, um, like, it's like a this game is like a certain type of art that's not really perfected properly by new companies, but this game, the company that made this is awesome. They did a great job paying attention Re to the detail. Reversal covers again. Reversal <laughs> covers again. Yes, yes, uh, definitely a cool game that I think a lot of people want to check out. Uh, I was very impressed with this one. Um, hmm. 
I, I struggled on one of the bosses a little bit, but I, I got past them pretty pretty easy. But like I got stuck on one. I, here's another. Here's a caveat about the game that, that I personally felt. I felt like some of the levels are too long because mm. I'm, I'm ready to, to get done with them. Mm. But at the same time, I appreciate the long levels because you never know if this game will get a sequel. And you know, this is all That's you have. True. So yeah, you know, gotta you know appreciate it. So definitely a good game. A lot of people want to check out. A lot of fun. Okay. All right. Very cool. Another game I hadn't heard of before. So. <laughs> This this is a trip, dude. I, I, I hope you, you like this. So these are Oh my god, this is these are NES homebrews based on classic tour yeah. models. And each one is unique. And yes, yeah, so you have Nightmare on Elm Street, okay. you have Candyman, Candyman. the original Halloween, and you have Friday the Thirteenth. And essentially, the the deal with this mm. is that they were actually made maybe like in the nineties or something like that. Oh my god! And he he's not selling them. He basically just wanted to kind of have them go to a collector and preserve them forever. So so before people are like, oh, those are licensed. I mean. He's not selling them. He, he's it's just, just selling them. It's, it's just for friends and family and that sort of stuff. And so, um, well, this is a Friday Thirteenth game. You get to play as Jason now, so that's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, and each game is a little bit different. They're all fairly simple, kind of cheesy games. Some are more fun than others, but right. uh, yeah, the Candyman game was pretty hilarious too. Yeah? So yeah, I, I captured all the footage for this. I was like, Very impressive, man. Yeah, wow, that's so cool, man. Yeah, it's just one of those. Again, it's one of those kind of love letters that people make just because it's kind of fun to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they all have titles and uh, you know. Know, they all have like eight bit versions of their soundtracks and stuff like that. So, right, right. Yeah, so very cool. Thank you very much. All right, so next game here, I got Ether Knights uh, for the PS4 system. I got this off Woot, and they had it on sale for like $15. You play as a character that's trying to get on a, a dating uh, website or whatever like that and meet a person. He gets a call. He gets the meeting place. And when you go try to meet the person, this big earthquake happens and the whole the city's kind of torn apart. So you go in these shelters on the ground because hmm. everybody's turned into monsters pretty much. So uh, you're in the shelter and then you have to like kind of like like walk by the enemies and everything and be quiet because you have no weapons at first. And then it's funny. This, there's a funny scene where you meet this police officer and the girl runs up to him. I already know the police officer looks kind of funny. He has his back turned. He turns around and he jumps on that girl and it's just the craziest beat down like i mean like it's like a, huh. this violence because he turns into a monster or whatever like that and um you gotta you gotta run from the police officer and everything like that it's pretty crazy but the game's a lot of fun it's an action rpg i would say it has a really good story to it it's got me compelled to play it <laughs> um but yeah it's a total surprise i think the company who um, who publishes the game is like that's this is like their first game you know so i talked about it on my channel before but um yeah, it's it's oh. it's very interesting. Never heard of this before. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's got a PS5 upgrade. Yeah, so. yeah. So. All right. Okay, uh, next up is a pretty cool release here uh, from V Blank, and that is the physical version of Shakedown Hawaii. Yeah. This comes with, with the the CEO action figure. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the 3DS, and the reason why I wanted this is because this has got to be one of the last 3D physical 3DS. I, games. I consider this the last release because it's a it's a newer game on there. V know? V Blank is a company. I, I don't know if they do that. Like they, I, they they've done that on several systems now. Like mm -hmm. I think the Wii, the Wii U, they've done that on. Right, it's like, right. Where they just are the one of the last people to publish their games on, and mm -hmm. so uh, it's pretty cool. And you can see that they went kind of all out with this one, where yeah. you've got like an action figure. Uh, there's a soundtrack in there, and of course the physical version of the game. Um, if you haven't played Shakedown Hawaii, it's the the sequel to uh, Retro, Retro City, City Rampage. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but but it's that game was like eight bit. This one's like sixteen bit. So it's a little bit newer. The little bit newer references, like pop culture references right, and stuff like right. that. So fantastic game. Awesome to have that in the collection. Definitely, definitely. Uh, we went to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, and mm -hmm. my buddy Mark is there. He had a booth, um, a retro game players, and he actually does music and everything. But not only that, he put his music as a Dreamcast game. So pretty much when you put the game in the Dreamcast, it plays the music <laughs> plus the videos and everything like that. So um, he, I think he gifted you one too. But here's game Malibu Mode 7. Yeah, he put this out, man, and it's like uh, he, he does good soundtracks. That lunchbox is that is, is that his or that's his too. So he has a a, a store, uh, huh. well, an arcade called uh, Galactics. It's a real arcade. Yeah, it's really, real arcade in a story. Check it out if you're in a oh. story and everything like that. Because that's a I, really cool. Yeah, and I, I, it sucks. I haven't been there yet, and he's had it up for like a couple years now. So I and I was one supposed to be one of the first reasons. We got to do a road there. trip. <laughs> yeah, we definitely got to do a road trip or something like that to go down to Marcus's shop. He hooked me up with one of these. So this is like a giveaway they had for uh, an event. And he saved one for me. I didn't think he was, but Marcus was looking out for me. So, yeah, Marcus, if you're cool. watching, I appreciate you. And uh, 
keep doing the music, man. Malibu Mode 8 next. <laughs> okay, cool. That's awesome. All right, uh, next up for me is a newer game, and that is the new Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown on PS5. Worth 50 bucks? I think so. Um, I'm I'm pretty far into the game right now. So mm -hmm. it, it's basically a Metroidvania style, you know, two and a half, two point five D platforming game. Um, it is so well done. It is a really well done Metroidvania game. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically that's what it is in in the uh, the, the Prince of Persia world. Uh, just fantastic. It, the level design, the characters, the graphics. Mm -hmm. The the one thing I will say though, and people have kind of complained about this, that the game is very difficult. It's, is it? It does. It, it, you, there's points where, man, it's like you'll struggle to to get somewhere. You know what I mean? Like it's very pre precise in some of its jumps and some of the things that you're supposed to do. But it's got a lot of options in there as well to kind of help you get through it and stuff like that. But fantastic game. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. So yeah, I plan man, on finishing it soon. That's what it's all soon. about, man. As yeah. As you're enjoying it. Another item here from Project Retro Games. Lunar, the Silver Star, and uh, Lunar Eternal Blue on the Sega CD. Hmm. Now these games came out originally for the Sega CD, but they were um, they 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 edited stuff out of it. These versions are uncensored, like the Japanese version, oh, okay. and, it, and so the difficulty uncensored. in those games are not modded like they were in the American versions. So you're basically playing the Japanese versions in English, like they were meant to be when they came out here, hmm. unedited, just how the developer wanted it to be. And the Lunar games are really good RPGs. I mean. I was very impressive for the Sega CD back in the day, you know, and a lot of people, I think a lot of people would like to see how they are now if they if they want to go back and revisit them. They want to play the, yeah. the unedited versions of them, so. What is your Sega CD collection like right now? Um, it's kind of, it's. I think I have around 12 games. It's not yeah. like it used to be, like yeah. all those heavy hitters, but, you know, I'm building out what I want to have in it. Because, yeah. You know, and then playing it on a Poly Mega will probably be easier than playing it on Sega CD or whatever like that. It so, is, yeah. That, um, yeah, I was just asking because mine's kind of the same way. I've got, you can see it right there. It's yeah. like maybe. I'm not trying to have a big library of it because there's not a lot of great games I want to play, yeah. you know, but still. It's, well, it was, it's a type of system that I used to buy when I saw it cheap. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> when, when, yeah, we used to see <laughs> when it was cheap. cheap back in the day. Day. <laughs> now. Not ooh. anymore. <laughs> All right, I just have one more thing. And so. I have one more as well, so. Oh, okay. Time. All right, well, cool. Well, uh, I'm going to end here where, for me, this is basically uh, some. Oh. Did you also pick these up as well? Yeah, but I got you that. <laughs> Blockbuster from them and everything like that. This is like a. Dude, uh, yeah. So, so Retro Fighters has, in, in the, it has been putting out awesome wireless controllers for yeah. a while now. So, uh, I d picked up the Xbox. The original Xbox, this has an adapter to work mm -hmm. on your original Xbox, which is freaking awesome. But it also works with a Switch and PC. And then they also have the Sega Dreamcast one, which I was also looking forward to. Yeah. And so, great, fantastic. But then they released this, which yeah. I don't think anybody saw Licensed coming. by Blockbuster, too. Yeah, is awesome. this is official. Yeah. yeah, so definitely cool if you want to put your Switch games in the case and everything like that. You can put it it like looks a... like a real, uh, you know, VHS. Yeah. yeah, VHS. It's yeah. so, so awesome. So, so very cool. Very good idea. Uh, Happy as official licensed by Blockbuster. Yeah, you know, so it, as you know, is that I went to the the last Blockbuster mm -hmm. down in Bend, Oregon last year. And you know, it's funny because there's only one, it's family owned at this point. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess I never would have expected that they would start licensing out their stuff like yeah. this. It's brilliant because they absolutely should because why not tap into some of that nostalgia? Yeah, you know what I mean? Definitely. I mean, when you see that, everyone knows what that is, right? So yeah. I, I guess what I'm wondering is that if this is one of the first that we'll see. Maybe we'll see other stuff, you know? Okay. So be kind of cool. Last item from me here. Um, this, is, this is pretty. Epic. You, you, you seem sad. <laughs> Uh, I, I am. It's the last one. It's still kind of cool. Oh, I didn't know the box opened here a little bit. Let me grab it from the bottom here. I don't know what this is. I was going to review this, but I didn't get a chance to. But this is a Visco Mini Arcade Bar Top. <laughs> okay. Um, so this oh. thing is, man, so I had to pick this up because, you know, I, out with the counter case, I said I was looking at everything, and this was just coming out. Now, um, I haven't oh. reviewed it yet. I'm going to review it soon, but it's got 12 games on there and it, like a lot of new ones I've played recently. Yeah, so. like Andros. Uh, Andros Donos, yeah. Yeah, and then also uh, Bang Bang Busters. Yes, yes. This, that game is like a, it's like a, what are you, a Snow Brothers and a, yep. another game I can't think of. Tur Tumble Pop, too. Like those put together. So pretty cool huh. games on there. Dude, this is wild because, again, it's they're all kind of like somewhat obscure yeah you know yeah I mean? exactly and uh, it huh. has a usb port on there so i'm, I'm thinking maybe they, they, you could upgrade games on there or they could make a, a sell a, an official one or whatever like that hmm. so you got new games on there or something 
But uh, yeah, I'm going to review it and everything like that. And Where did you find this? Uh, that was on Amazon and another website called MVS SNK or something like that. Like you can buy them on there as hmm. well. So um, it retails for 200 bucks. So make sure you, you got you want 200. You think it's worth 200 bucks and everything like that before you pick it up. But, yeah, sure. But uh, yeah, I like it. So um, okay, well, I, I, I mean, I'm going to test it out. Obviously, review it and go from there. But yeah, I'm happy. I think I think I, it was a pretty good purchase. So wow, that's I again I had no idea. Yeah. So. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, is that it? Yeah. I think that's it for for this uh, this video. We are far from done. Yeah. Let us know in the comments if you want to see another one. I know. Huh? Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> of but, course you do. But just want to let I you do. guys. Yeah. Just want to let you guys. We really appreciate you guys, and we're happy that you guys like these videos, and yeah. we'll keep them coming. So. Oh, absolutely. So, dude, where can people find you on the internet now that you have? Over a hundred thousand subscribers. I know, right? The radical one. Come check me out. Do reviews, our top tens, all that good stuff. So yeah, eating a cheeseburger. Eat a cheeseburger too. Yeah, you yeah. know, might do that. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing, and take care.